Welcome to The Table Podcast, where we discuss issues of God and culture. Brought to you by Dallas Theological Seminary. It's my pleasure to welcome you to a special edition of The Table Podcast, where we are celebrating 10 years of podcasts. That represents almost 500 episodes and 350 hours of recorded material on an array of topics. And so, unlike the normal Table podcast, which takes place in a studio interacting with experts, what you are going to be seeing is a chapel uh, that we had, a cultural engagement chapel in which we celebrated and discussed 10 years of podcasting here at Dallas Theological Seminary. So I'm going to welcome you to the table where we discuss issues of God and culture, and today our topic is the table. Hi, everyone. I'm Millicy Pipkin. I'm an intern and a student here at DTS, and my internship is under the direction of the Hendrick Center, and these three gentlemen are sort of like my bosses, right? <laughs> and so without further ado, just to let you know that these are three of the faces you'll see here at DTS doing our podcasting on the table. Our uh, fourth guest, or fourth host, I should say, is not able to be with us, Kimberly Cook. She is uh, attending another matter and was unable to be here with us. These three gentlemen are here and they are host of the table and you should know them as the faces here at DTS, Dr. Daryl Bach, Bill Hendricks, and Dr. Mikael Del Rosario. And I say that because Dr. Rosario just became such just a few weeks ago and we're very proud of you and congratulations. been thinking about starting your own podcast, we're going to kind of share some experiences here with you that will kind of help you and that'll be an added value alongside the point of us actually getting an opportunity to celebrate 10 years on air with the podcast, The Table. Happy birthday to you all off the top. And Dr. Bach, this is kind of your baby. You got all of this started. Kind of tell us a little bit about how that happened. Well, I need to credit uh, the beginning of the podcast to um, not a DTS grad, Steve Jobs. Um, uh, I was in Germany on sabbatical at Tübingen, uh, and I regularly turn into the Apple updates when the iPod was announced. And I immediately sensed that the iPod had the potential for us to minister to particularly graduates, when thinking so much of students at the time, who had left the seminary and, and uh, it would be a means of keeping them up to date with what was going on in the theological world in a simple, straightforward, easy, accessible kind of way, long before COVID came along. And so um, I sent an email, which I still have to this day, to John Grasmick, it was Dean at the time, and Mark Bailey saying, uh, I have an idea about a way we can minister to alumni that would be a direct ministry um, to them, and I shared it with them, and when I got back from the sabbatical, uh, Dr. Bailey and I sat down, and just in an ad hoc way, used to do podcasts as topics kind of hit the Richter scale, and we thought, oh, we need to address this and help keep um, alums up to date on what's going on. Uh, several years later, we did this for several years, a very ad hoc basis, no real intentionality behind it other than to keep ministering in topics that came up as it went along the way. And, and we were at an event, a very major church event, a global event in Cape Town, South Africa in 2010. It was the Lausanne Worldwide Conference in which we were both attending. I was helping uh, in the background uh, distributing materials to the various sites that were connected and Mark was attending as the president of the seminary and we had an alumni event. And at the alumni event, Mark asked the question, uh, what can we do to continue to serve you? And almost instantly and in multiple voices, they said, please keep those podcasts coming our way. And so uh, on the way out of that meeting, I said to Mark, you know, we do this ad hoc. There's really no intentionality behind it other than when we think an issue is important enough to address. We could be more intentional about what we are doing, and I think it makes sense for us to think about that. And that became the basis for a conversation that extended to my uh, moving or extending my role in ministry here in cultural engagement to the Hendricks Center and led directly to the launch of the weekly podcast, which we are celebrating 
10 years up. So in fact, we have dual birthdays. We've got, we've got the podcast that were going on for a while, but we are now celebrating 10 weeks of doing something every week to minister to people worldwide. And now you have, what, almost 500 episodes? We have almost 500 episodes in 10 years. We have 350 hours of material that we have produced in that 10 years. That is amazing, reaching around the globe, sharing ministry, and loving well, all here from DTS. Bill, want to give you an opportunity to tell us how all of this is tied under the Hendrick Center. Well, as you know, the motto of the Hendrick Center is shaping compassionate, courageous leaders. We want leaders who are both biblically solid and will stand for the truth of God's word, but also do so in a way that is engaging and is winsome and is Christ-like. And so a big part of that is the tone that we use. And what the Table podcast does is brings both of those together. First of all, because it's a DTS product, if you will, you know, DTS has a reputation globally that whatever else comes out of DTS, it's been checked out biblically, right? That, that's kind of just known out there. And so when we bring professors and other guests uh, onto the table podcast, they are people who have gone in depth into the word to understand how the word relates to the issues that we face. At the same time, in presenting that material, we want to do so with a tone that, as I say, is engaging and Christ-like. And so we, we, we certainly have debate at times on the table podcast. We don't agree with everything. But the way we have those conversations, that's the key. And what we're trying to do on the table in a, in a way is to model how we believe Christians should talk to each other and frankly talk to the culture so that we are heard. But first of all, we understand, we listen before we try to speak and we try to understand what's at stake, what's really being said, and then say, huh, let's think about what God might have to say about this. Right. It's kind of the goal and the mission of the Table Podcast. Thanks for sharing that. And uh, Dr. Del Rosario, who will come to you now, and I just want to ask you, what have you learned since you've been working with the podcast, because as an intern, I've learned a lot. Um, I was a news anchor and a television person, and I hosted my own television program for 30 years. But just doing this podcast here at DTS, there are a lot of different people who are gonna have their hands on it before it ever makes it out to you. So tell us, what have you learned in your process from internship to the position you currently hold? Yeah, I was Daryl Vox's first intern at the Cultural Engagement Center, and um, wow, just like what you're doing right now, all the way up until now I'm hosting the show, um, it takes a team. It really does take a team. There's so many departments that are involved in what we do, um, unlike an individual who might just have an idea for a show, record the show in their bedroom, and then post it that day. Um, when you're working with a church, an organization, or a school, there are so many uh, moving parts to it. And so we really want to thank the, the Office of the President, for example, Mark Bailey, Dr. Yarbrough, Josh Wynn. They listen to every single episode. <laughs> and uh, I used to say that Mark Bailey back in the day, so he was our biggest fan. He would listen to all the shows and watch all the shows and even the shows that didn't air because for one reason or another, we didn't um, end up airing them. He would, he would hear them all. And so, um, media production, um, there was a time where the, uh, the IT department was involved. And so, there's so many departments that are involved in it, and really, it, it is a team effort. So, everything that you see um, in that, that 45 minutes, um, there's, there's probably 100, 200 hours that goes into that, from the host preparing to uh, read the book of the guest, um, preparing to ask questions, to the editing that goes into it and all of that. So there really is a whole lot that goes into the table. Right down to the president's office having the last say on whether or not we're even going to have that person as a guest. <laughs> I mean, it's a very tedious process, but it's important to do that. Mm -hmm. We need to do that. Dr. Bach, what have you learned? Well, I, uh, As what if I, he can learn anything, right? He gets no, 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 no. Right? <laughs> I've learned a ton. Uh, I've learned. I have learned, and Bill's already mentioned this. Learn the value of listening to people. Uh, sometimes we have a boatload of stuff we want to say, but sometimes we need to think about how we say it. And so 
um, the variety of guests, the variety of skills. I've seen, I've seen the array of gifts that exist in the body of Christ, which causes me to appreciate the way God has gifted each one of us. It's another thing that we have at the center. Has gifted each one of us with special abilities that give us the slot that he puts us in that allows us to minister effectively. Uh, I've, learned, I've, I've learned a lot about teamwork. Um, Mikkel has already alluded to the fact that it takes a many, many people to put together the table. You only see the tip of the iceberg in terms of the labor that goes into uh, producing a podcast. I mean, of which the starting point is, is this an idea even worthy to give 45 minutes to? Um, I've learned the value of the archive that we've created, um, that uh, even though we release episodes a week at a time, what we're really about is building the archive in the background so that when you go to the web page, there's an array of topics. Some of those topics have been looked at from a variety of angles across the archives that we've built on various core themes. So there's just, it's been, <laughs> it's been a graduate education to do the table and to have 350 hours of material that we offer to the public as a way of thinking and reflecting theologically on what we call evergreen themes. We tend not to about, talk about particular events, we tend to talk about things and how they matter in principle with what it is uh, the Bible says about the way Christians should think about the world around them. So we've tried to inspire and be a catalyst for people to think about the world in which they live in and the application of their Christian faith so they don't end up being schizophrenic in, in living one way at one point and then dealing dealing with the world in another at another point. Right. Bill, do you have anything you want to add? Well, the only thing I'd add is um, when we say the Bible speaks to all the issues of life, um, that's a double-edged sword. On the one side, that's great that it, that it does and that we need to recognize that. On the other side, it, it actually creates a bit of a problem for people like us who do the podcast because there's so many issues out there to address. Um, Dr. Bach did mention that when he postulated to Dr. Bailey on doing the table in a, in a weekly way, one of the early questions that Dr. Bailey asked him was, do you think you're gonna run out of material? Now just think about this culture. You know, this is the gift that keeps on giving if you're doing cultural engagement, right? <laughs> and so we, uh, we began to collect a list of topics that we wanted to and for a while, we were maybe 10 or 12 in the hopper, and now we're, I don't know, hundreds. I, we got topics out until next year. Oh so. <laughs> and shows booked up until the end of and, the year. And more coming all the time. Yeah. So, what, so what I said to Dr. Bailey when he asked me this question is, uh, Mark, um, I haven't given that any thought because I don't think I'm running out of topics. When we open the show, we say, welcome to the table. We address issues of God and culture. In the back of my mind, I'm saying, that's a nice way of saying, we'll talk about anything and everything. <laughs> right. So now let's ask you this. What makes the Table Podcast different from any other? Because there are a lot of podcasts out there. So what makes ours unique? Dr. Rosario? There's a couple of ways I think that comes to my mind right away is one, I don't know any other podcast that has four hosts who aren't co-hosts. We take turns hosting the show every single week, and I don't know another show that does that. Also, in terms of uh, seminary shows or shows associated with schools, what we try to do is help people see how the Bible relates to all of life. And so we talk about people going from the Bible to life, but sometimes to help people do that, we have to help them go from life back to the Bible. And so the way in which we engage, the way in which we uh, handle these topics show the relevance of theology to all of life. We start with where people are, where they're at, the issues that they face, and um, help them to have better spiritual conversations that way. Daryl? Yeah, I, Mikkel said it, life back to the Bible. I tell people that we, we need to learn how to switch hit. Uh, we're used to being trained of going from life to the Bible, but almost everyone who reads their Bible is going in the reverse direction. They're going from their life back to the Bible to try and get guidance for how they should live their lives. And we need to learn how to switch hit. So we're trying to model something that generally speaking you don't 
teach directly. And I don't know too many podcasts that are structured to do that and, and to do it in the way in which we're doing it by not focusing on individual events that are happening in a particular moment and five years from now you won't remember what that's about. But rather thinking about here's generally where, uh, where we are and the way we should think about this biblically. And then the way we work is we do 45 minutes on a topic and sometimes we'll sit back and say, you know that little five minute clip about that particular aspect of that topic, that could use its own 45. And so, so one of the ways we generate top, we're like cell division, okay? Uh, the, 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 uh, the podcast creates its own topical area and the subtopic in there becomes a topic for the, for the next one that we do in that area. Even though we never cover a topic in sequence, we never build a series by going through a series several weeks, we're building the series in the backdrop of the archive that we're doing so that over time, we've got 14, 16, 18 episodes on LBGTQ topics, for example, covered from about every angle you can think of. Let me say this. Um, what, you, what I see you all doing is just amazing to me, um, having worked in broadcasting for years and then to see this well oil machine just running mm -hmm. and knowing all of the work that's going behind here, behind the scenes. Want to go ahead and give you an opportunity to ask a question if you have any. You have the QR code. Go ahead and put it in, and then we'll try to get it on before we wrap up in about 10 minutes or so. Um, and then just coming back here to the panel, I want to ask, what would you say you've, you, you think you wish that you had known in this process, either before, during, after? What would you say that is and or... Tell us what would be your favorite episode, maybe? And I know that's not a question that Dr. Bach loves. <laughs> that's why I kind of gave you two. <laughs> so take your pick, Bill. Well, asking me which, of my, which, which show I've done is my favorite show is like asking me which of my children is my favorite child. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah. every one of these things is unique and different. Each of the guests is unique and different. Each of the topics is unique and different. Um, Having said that, I mean, I, I guess if I just say, well, what come to mind immediately? We, we had a show with a fellow named Tom Terrence who had been a, basically a Ku Klux Klan terrorist back in the Civil Rights era and uh, basically ended up in solitary confinement, um, you know, s satisfied that he had done the right thing and now was paying the price for it and totally lost, totally without hope in the world and alone in a cell and I can't think of many you know parallel circumstances where somebody is cut off how are they going to ever hear about God and the gospel when their only human contact is with guards who don't let them out except for one hour of the day out in a steel cage in the outside and then it's back into a dark cell but God managed to penetrate that isolation. It's an incredible story, first of all, of God's grace and salvation, and then to bring him all the way back to where now he has a whole outreach to uh, basically people who were like himself, you know, radical uh, terrorists and, and, and people who were racists, particularly in the Deep South, holding out the hope of the gospel to them. Uh, we had another great, pro I had another great program uh, with a guy named Horst Schultz who really helped to put, um, uh, what's the hotel chain? The Marriott. Mar Mar is it Marriott or something else? No, I want to say Ritz Carlton. Ritz Carlton. I'm sorry. Okay. One of the problems being a host is you get your programs all mixed up. <laughs> yes, he, he helped really put Ritz Carlton on the map with this wonderful, uh, set of biblical values that he, he brought into this organization without using Bible verses. You know, it's a great faith and work story of how you can help people begin to practice excellence and uh, what we would call loving your neighbor, you know, in the hospitality industry. And uh, I have a friend who calls this type of thing, basically teaching people discipleship before you teach them evangelism. Is, is kind of how it works. But those are two shows. I love your are, examples. Yeah. Those are really, really good. Mikhail? 
Yeah, I would echo what, what Bill said. It's like, how can you choose one? If you ask an artist, like, what's your favorite song that you wrote? Or it, it might be different, like, what's your favorite song to play on stage? Something like that, right? So there's just a few that come to mind. Uh, I, we do so many different kinds of shows. I love doing the apologetic shows. Um, but three that come to mind real quick is one, I got to interview one of my former, she was never actually my student, but I was a high school teacher and her debate coach when she was in high school. And she's the CEO of Marinus Analytics and she helps uh, the FBI and other uh, law enforcement um, fight human trafficking using artificial intelligence. So that's, a, that's an amazing show. It's called Fighting Human Trafficking with Artificial Intelligence. Um, another one that comes to mind is uh, Kosti Hinn. Kosti Hinn is the nephew of the famous televangelist Benny Hinn, and that show I was in the studio and he didn't show up because we had a mix up with the time. And I hadn't finished reading his book. By the way, if you ever want to do a podcast, read your guest's book. That really helps. <laughs> and I, I w got halfway through it. And so I said, well, I'll just sit on the couch in my office and finish this book until we rescheduled for a few hours later. When I go through his book, I found out that he read a Chuck Swindoll book as part of his movement outside, away from the prosperity gospel and, and leaving Benny Hinn's organization. So we got to bring that out. And what better show to bring it out on than, than the Table Podcast here at Dallas Seminary? So those are just a couple of examples. And... Um, I just got to meet so many people, and uh, every show is, is, is different, and there's, there's a certain charm to every show. Wonderful. Daryl? <laughs> My, I, I, I'm, I'm very much with Bill. It's like asking, you know, who's your favorite child? Um, and and each, each show has a dimension to it that you learn to appreciate, but there is one that I think is particularly significant. We've done a series of shows on, on the racial issues, because race isn't an issue that anyone talks about anymore. And... Uh, uh, and I asked Tony Evans at the beginning of this podcast, tell me what I as a Caucasian don't get about being black in America. Mm -hmm. And he went through a list of five minutes without a break of things that he deals with on a regular basis that I never have to cope with. Mm -hmm. And I just thought, man, this is, a, this is a great way to descriptively present to people the different worlds in which some of us live so that we can gain an understanding and an empathy. This is the compassionate part of what we do uh, for, for, the, for a contentious space that exists around us in which there's very little positive modeling going on. And here we were, two friends, we've been friends for life, modeling our relationship over all these years, the shared ministry that we've had as Dallas Seminary grads, talking about a contentious area and thinking about how Christ speaks into it. Uh, uh, um, you, do, you love all your children, but you give some of them a hug. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> well, now, um, my favorite podcast, as if I've done any, um, is the one that I just recently did with you, Dr. Bach, <laughs> on an African-American life. And you can check that out on the DTS website, along with some of the others as well. I just want to give an opportunity now for you to share some of your experience in helping someone who may be contemplating starting their own podcast. What would you say about startup? and about um, continuing with consistency as you all have done for 10 years. Mikhail. You need to start with what is your why? What is your reason? Why are you doing this? Because when it gets hard and you don't know what content to put out next, you need to keep the audience in mind. Who is God calling you to help? And how is God calling you to help them? So know your niche, know your audience, and what are the problems that they're working through? What are the questions that they have? And then think of those people. That'll help you get over, you know, what do I look like today if you have a video podcast or, you know, what does my microphone sound like? Start with what you have. You can always level up later. Don't let the tech hold you back. Sometimes you just need to start before you're ready and just uh, trust that God has called you to do this and help those people that you have been called to help and keep them in mind. Can you... Bill and or Daryl, can you offer anything from your expertise and your having doing this for the last 10 years, what you would say to somebody who's just now starting and what you've learned and how you can um, maybe help them get started and continue? Remember that it's a ministry. It's not about you. It's about your guest. It's about what they offer. It's about uh, the reflection that you're trying to generate for your audience and how you're ministering and serving them. Podcasting, when it's done well and when it's done right, is designed to help people 
in the world in which they live. That's what our commitment to cultural engagement is about. We're trying to help Christians live well in a challenging and fallen world, to do so without doom and gloom overwhelming them, because I'm deeply convinced that greater is he who is in us than he who's in the world. And so and when we learn to operate from that space, we put ourselves in a position to minister and to serve and to care, and that's the commitment that I think should come through any podcast, almost no matter what the topic is. Yeah, and I'd say um, you, you don't have to do it all. You know, there's a lot of different angles with podcasting. There's the content, there's the, um, there's the technology, you know, there's the interviewing, uh, there's the marketing. I mean, there's just a lot of angles to it. Very few people can do all of that well. I mean, very few people. And so you have to know, well, what is my strength? And then involve and recruit other people who have strengths that you don't necessarily have. We've talked about, this is a team thing. I myself, I'm a host, I'm entertainment. I, you know, just give me somebody and I'll help them talk, okay? But don't, don't put me back here in the technology side. Don't put me in the getting this out on the web side, okay? And that's not to diminish those things. That's to say, I thank God that, you know, around me are people who can get this thing where it needs to go because I wouldn't be able to do that. And so make it in terms of a team effort. Yeah, I'll say when the pandemic hit, that was a big wake-up call to us mm -hmm. about now we're in our homes. I don't have production staff. All, all I knew how to do was get in front of a camera and talk. But now I have to find a way to record at home and, and all of this. So we, we appreciate what people have, have done even in, even in the past, but we had an extra special appreciation for them yeah. when we were alone in our, in our respective homes um, running the table. Very good. And um, Mikhail, I just want you to kind of give us an idea of how you all come up with your topics, because we know that uh, Daryl said there wasn't going to be a problem coming up with the topics for cultural engagement and doing the podcasting, but just for someone who's interested in starting a podcast, how do you come about coming up with the topics and the guests? Well, we say at the Hendricks Center, everything we do, we do as a team. And so one of the things that we do as a team is we discuss topics around the table, not the table <laughs> podcast, but around our, <laughs> our conference room table. And uh, we just put the topics out there and suggest topics, things that come up in the news, things that come up maybe in a magazine that we've read, a book we've read, or maybe somebody that we've had lunch with, one of our contacts, maybe one of our grads or um, uh, pastors associated with Dallas Seminary has um, an issue that they're working through or, or something that they're doing and that we want to highlight. So those are a couple ways that we do that. And then Millicy and I and, and other interns will put all the topics out and say, well, this one would be good around Easter time. This one would be good around Jewish History Month. And we just kind of slot them in, in places that make the most sense. It's been a fun ride. I um, appreciate you all for accepting me and my internship to work with you because it's, it's been different. A couple of questions now coming from the audience. Based on the conversations you have hosted over the last few years, what do you think is the most difficult challenge to the church today? Two of them. Um, and don't ask me which one is more challenging, because I don't know. Um, sexuality and race. Um, both of them are difficult. Um, developing a sense of empathy for uh, people whose life story is very different than your own, in many cases, uh, at least in regard to sexuality and some of those discussions, whose values are very different than your own, uh, is a challenge. And to do so with the kind of uh, effort to connect with people is important because one thing we try and never lose sight of on the table is there's a mission that we've been given by our Lord which is to go into the world and make disciples. It doesn't say go into the church and make disciples, which means that we are called to go out into the world and meet people who need what the gospel has to offer, just as we needed what the gospel has to offer. We're supposed to never forget that. And make an offer to them that says, God is going to challenge you in the way that you've been living on the one hand, but I guarantee you the life that he's going to give you is going to be a much better deal. And to do that in some of these areas where so much of a person's identity is at stake um, is a real challenge. So those would be the two that I would say. Yeah, yeah and the, I can see why Jesus prayed John 17. 
because I personally think that before we do any kind of a job trying to speak to people outside the church, we've got to be able to speak to other brothers and sisters within the church. And, and right now I see that as, frankly, our biggest challenge. You know, J Jesus prayed for unity, and then we go to Philippians 2, and it talks about, uh, you know, seeing the interests of others is more important than your own. And then we get to Colossians 3, and it says, be kind to one another, forgive one another. Uh, we have all of these passages. We have 1 John, where John says, look, if you say you're going to love God, that's great, but you can't see him. But you can see this other brother that God has, or sister, that God has made in his image, and therefore you can see them. But how can you say you love God if you don't love that person? And it's, it's challenging enough to speak to people with a whole different worldview. What's really challenging, I'm finding today, is when somebody is telling me they're a brother or sister in Christ, and, and we're having a hard time even communicating between ourselves. And I think we've got to get it together within the body before we sort of have credibility to go out and try to tell other people how this whole thing called life works. Yeah, and part of that is cultural engagement. Part of that loving people well is working to understand people and the issues that they face so that we can have better spiritual conversations and ultimately people can be invited into this life-giving relationship with God, which is actually the only thing that brings lasting human fulfillment. And so um, this whole idea of cultural engagement that we model on the show um, is important. And as an apologist, I think we are often trained to demonstrate the reasonability or the, the, the rationality and the reasonableness of the Christian faith. But many people are looking for the relevance first and the goodness of Christianity first in these areas like race, sexuality. Is Christianity even good before I even care to investigate is Christianity true? And so that's another challenge that the church faces right now is demonstrating the goodness of Christianity before making a case for its rationality or reasonableness. Closing comment, Daryl? Oh. Um, I, think it's, I think it's a prayer request. Um, my prayer would be that um, as we have sought to serve the church and to honor God and to care for people, that in the next 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years, um, that whatever the table is and becomes, that that would continue to be at the center of what we do. So just pray for us. Um, we give a lot of energy, time, reflection on not only what we talk about, but how we talk about it. And um, that kind of wisdom is desperately needed in a world which is so contentious that sometimes what is said is not even heard. Very good. All right, that's all the time we have. We had a lot of great questions coming from the audience. Um, we are going to have a little time after the chapel in which you, if you didn't get your question answered, you can actually come up and talk with some of the hosts here uh, on our panel. Thank you all for joining us this morning with this uh, cultural engagement chapel and just kind of sharing your hearts and your experience with us. And yes, we do okay. have a video from okay. Dr. Yarbrough. Okay. <laughs> but I wanted to say to you, from, from me to you all, happy birthday. Um, May the Lord continue to bless you. Thank you. All right. Miriam? Okay, we are going to just go straight to a video presentation from Dr. Yarbrough. Didn't allow me to join you on the campus today, but I want to honor the Hendrick Center as they celebrate the 10th anniversary of the Table Podcast. The Hendricks Center, named after Dr. Howard Hendricks, has been an influential part of Dallas Theological Seminary since 1986. Dr. Hendricks, also known as Prof, had a passion for teaching the characteristics of a leader, with an emphasis on embodying Christ and being a servant leader. With the help of Dr. Bill Lawrence and Dr. Andy Seidel, the three men established the Hendricks Center to shape the leaders of tomorrow. In 2012, Dr. Daryl Bach joined the Hendricks Center with the burden for the struggles of current leaders. And he believed spiritual leaders can only lead if they understand the culture around them. After brainstorming with Dr. Mark Bailey, Dr. Bach planned to begin a cultural engagement podcast. Some folks feared the podcast would run out of topics. 
But Dr. Bach assured the team that was the least of their concerns because, according to him, his own words, he said, everything is a big category. Well, on October 3rd, 2012, Dr. Bach recorded the first podcast, which we now know as the Table Podcast. The first podcast had humble beginnings as it was recorded in the old Chafer Chapel radio room. And then in 2014, the Table Podcast was placed in the Todd Academic Building. With the help of Mr. Ryan Holmes, Executive Director of the Media Production Department here at DTS and his accomplished team, the Table Podcast hosts have used this studio to release episodes on a weekly basis. Now, 10 years later, the Hendrick Center has recorded 500 podcasts using four different hosts who are also staff members at the Hendrick Center. Dr. Daryl Bach, Mrs. Kimberly Cook, Dr. Mikel Del Rosario, and Mr. Bill Hendricks. And the impact of these podcasts have been phenomenal. Each one draws helpful theological truths on relevant and engaging cultural topics. Topics such as human sexuality, work and faith, biblical themes, and global perspectives. And these podcasts are important for DTS to support because it provides a helpful guide for our students, staff, faculty, and friends in order to teach truth and love well. Congratulations to Dr. Daryl Bach and the entire staff at the Hendricks Center for 10 years of dedicated service. The DTS body is stronger because of the Table Podcast. And on behalf of the seminary and the Hendricks Center, we have a special award to give to Dr. Daryl Bach for 10 years of hosting the Table Podcast. Mm. Congratulations, Dr. Bach. And there you have it. Congratulations, Dr. Bach. Oh, you have it, a co closing comment or two? Yeah, it's um, the team that I work with is amazing. The people that I get to meet as a result is amazing. The ministry of God's faithfulness is amazing. And that's what we try and testify to. Thanks for listening to The Table Podcast. Dallas Theological Seminary. Teach truth. Love well.